it was steered by a PlayStation controller, using components bought from Camping World. And there were questions about its safety rating. It just seemed a bit shoddy. Ocean Gate shouldn't have been doing what it was doing. This is really focused on one thing, and that's the pressure vessel, and making sure that that, that component, which is clearly the most critical component of the sub, uh, is uh, safe. But five Titanic tourists paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to descend 12,500 feet in the Titan submarine. Now the remains of the sub have been found, and questions are being asked why experts who raise safety concerns about the Ocean Gate vessel were apparently ignored. One of the engineers was fired after voicing his concerns. One man refused to ride the sub after seeing how it was built, and one man who actually did ride it described his voyage to a newspaper as suicide. These are all the potential concerns that could have led to disaster. Oceangate, the company which owned the sub, said on its website that it was a mixture of bespoke engineering and off-the-shelf parts. They said this made the sub easy to fix, but the decision to use these components has now been called into question. David Pogue, a reporter who took a ride on the sub last year, reported it used lighting and handles bought from Camping World, and rusted scaffolding was used as ballast. You get there and then you start seeing this stuff and now your, your mood crashes and you get a little worried. Like, is this the level of polish and sophistication we're talking about? A previous passenger described how to release the ballast, passengers all had to move to one side of the vessel. Mr. Pogue described the craft as jerry-rigged, MacGyvered, and said a lot of the parts were less sophisticated than he expected, like the knockoff PlayStation controller used for steering. When Mr. Pogue challenged owner Stockton Rush over this, the Ocean Gate CEO is said to have hit back, saying the pressurized container where the passengers sit was state of the art. Made of carbon fiber and titanium, he claimed that NASA, Boeing, and Washington University had assisted in the design. Mr. Rush said that all of the other components could fail and the sub would still be safe. But he did admit on the Unsung Science podcast that his biggest fear was getting stuck and being unable to surface. Fears had been raised about the communications at least once before, after Titan went missing while Mr. Pogue was taking his voyage. The sub stopped responding to its support ship, got lost, was unable to find the Titanic wreck, and then went missing for five hours afterwards. Mr. Pogue said that there was talk at the time of adding an emergency beacon to the sub, but it seems this didn't happen. The sub is constantly plagued by mechanical problems, he added in TV interviews after the tragedy. The Titan operated in international waters, meaning it was outside the remit of government agencies. Mr. Pogue had to sign a waiver before getting on board, which said that the craft was experimental and had not been approved by any regulator. Oceangate said the sub could not be classified because it used technology that was so new it fell outside existing industry paradigms. Getting certification for the sub, the company said, would be a multi-year process that was unnecessarily slow because of a lack of pre-existing standards. Oceangate said the approval process was anathema to rapid innovation. By itself, the company argued, classification is not sufficient to ensure safety. CEO Stockton Rush was skeptical of safety standards, telling the Smithsonian that laws governing undersea craft needlessly prioritized passenger safety over innovation. Titan was not his first sub made in this fashion, but it was the first designed to handle tourists. As well as exploring the Titanic, he planned to venture to thermal vents and undersea battlegrounds. Mr. Rush 
described the submarine industry as obscenely safe, saying there hadn't been an accident in 35 years. But the industry also hasn't grown or innovated because of all the regulations, he added. If you want to be safe, he told CBS News just last year, don't get out of bed. While Mr. Rush may have dismissed the danger in what he was doing, others did not, and raised concerns for years before Titan disappeared. David Lockridge, who was hired by Mr. Rush to work on the sub, was embroiled in a lawsuit with Oceangate in 2018 after being sacked. The company accused the former Royal Navy Marine engineer of trying to get fired after he penned a report criticizing their safety standards. According to court documents, Mr. Lockridge had raised concerns over the integrity of the sub's hull, its viewing window, which was only certified to 4,000 feet, not the 13,000 feet it would be diving to, and flammable materials on board. He had urged Oceangate to get the craft certified and warned they would be otherwise subjecting passengers to extreme danger. And he was not the only one. A letter sent to Mr. Rush from leaders in the submersible industry around the same time warned that his experimental approach was risking accidents that could be catastrophic. There are only 10 vehicles in the whole world that can go 4,000 meters or deeper, and all of them are certified except the Titan. Chris Brown was one of Oceangate's early customers and bought a ticket for £80,000 after having a few beers with a friend who knew about it. But when Brown began asking questions, he quickly decided the voyage wasn't worth the risk. Parts of the submarine that I'd seen in the testing in the Bahamas just seemed a bit shoddy. They're using industrial piping for ballast. Um, they, they're using an Xbox controller for, for the steering. The strip lighting's something you get a DIY shop. The sub was beset by delays and technical issues. And when Mr. Brown finally got to inspect it, he came away with the impression that designers had been cutting corners. But what really did it for me was um, they flatly refused to get any form of certification. Arthur Lobel, a German man who did take a voyage on the Titan, described it to build as a suicide mission and said he was lucky to survive. At first, Lobel said, the submersible didn't work. Then the dive had to be abandoned when a part fell off and was reattached with zip ties. And finally, it was hit by electrical issues. I was nervous that we have to go return to go back because we got some problems like in the other dives uh, with the battery systems. Even Paul Henri Nagolet, perhaps the world's most experienced Titanic explorer, had doubts. In an interview with media in his home country of France, he admitted that he did not trust the submersible's composite material design. 